next up is our good friend Eugene Vukovic. Eugene is uh, these days with SoftServe. He's been running Health 2.0's chapters in New York City, Health 2.0's chapters in Amsterdam now. And now he's with SoftServe, and he's going to do about a 15-minute thing on artificial intelligence. I'll, I'll try to get you guys out very quickly for lunch, because that's excellent. So can you guys play the video, please? You have sexual responses. I mean, this works. Oh. That I can turn on and off pretty much instantly. See? I can do it again if you like. So basically what you saw there is from a UK series called Black Mirror, which looks at a technology from a dark side. What you saw there was a woman uh, interacting with a robot. Uh, the story behind it is her husband, Ash, passed away. Um, and her girlfriend signed her up for a service that was a chat bot, which looked at her husband's history, <coughs> um, social media, video, voice. And she was able to interact with her husband after his death. That escalated or upsold to uh, voice conversations. And then the next thing you know, uh, this gentleman that looks exactly um, like her husband shows up at the door. So this was a sexual discussion on stage. She was asking if his unit is working. So I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes on why, you know, will artificial intelligence change healthcare? Um, a little bit of a primer. Can I see by show of hands who knows what AI is or? Okay. So the, the term was coined in 1956, so you know, many, many years ago, and it's really around machines being intelligent. You know, think about machines or reasoning um, and not just ingesting knowledge, which is uh, what we hear a lot, but actually producing knowledge. Uh, planning and learning, well, thank God for Waze and Google, right? I don't think about where I'm going. Um, natural language processing, we all talk in different languages. We all talk with different dialects and intonations. Um, and NLP is a key and important piece of it that's been improving over the course of the years. Um, and then think about robotics and perception. Um, and so these are just some of the things that are within the AI world. Nothing new, as I said, right? I mean, think about your Amazon recommendations engine uh, in banking, fraud prevention, and your, your spending. Um, search engine's been doing it for, for ages now. And my favorite, because I'm a show geek, uh, Netflix recommendations, unless my 11-year-old watches one of her teeny bopper shows. So that screws me up completely. Um, why AI now? Why it's a lot of the conversations? Um, so you know, I wear a you know, multitude of devices. We're all generating data. Um, as my friend Manish uh, Juneja from UK says, 24 by 7, right? And our bodies are generating the data. So these huge data sets that are being created around us are phenomenal. Over 2 billion phones and growing. Um, and then, of course, the compute power and the cost has been dwindling year over year. Um, and, of course, you know, we have at Software 4,000 engineers, um, and the improvement in the learning systems and the data science has also been escalating the AI push. So since we've been talking about VC, unfortunately, I couldn't get the data for 2015, but you've seen pure AI. Um, startups, and I would love for next year to see Health2O source actually have some AI in it from a healthcare perspective. Overall market um, this year has seen over 300 deals, 33 M&A transactions, uh, one IPO, and it's projected about 5% of the total VC spend. So that's kind of a little bit of an overview for everyone around just general AI. Um, and then last year in January, Google bought DeepMind, and of course, uh, you know, they've been saying they're not entering healthcare and look at the push, right? So I think there's a lot more coming around, you know, system neurosciences and machine learning coming out of Google as we'll see. It. Okay, so this was me in Barcelona about two years ago. You know, the joy, the surprise was I didn't know I'm going to lose all my hair in two years, but that's me. And it was a startup uh, health and sport lab that was focusing on health and wellness and to give feedback to, um, you know, uh, to trainers. Um, Look at the picture now, and this is very, very, very recent news. Apple buys Emotion, right? So same picture in the background. So the health spa was probably using Emotion as the, as the platform. Um, 
as soon as I posted that, uh, somebody said, well, do I really need an iPhone to tell me how I feel? But if you think about the ecosystem uh, that's been created around all the apps um, and embedding and the developers and entrepreneurs, embedding the emotions into the platforms, uh, which it's fantastic and phenomenal. I can't wait personally. Another trivia, anybody knows who that is? Yell out. All right, I, I heard some fans. So I'm a big sci-fi guy, right? So a little boy loses his eyesight, his other senses, um, you know, really extrapolate. Of course, not everybody gets a martial arts trainer to help, you know, uh, explode those things. But imagine if visually impaired people can actually see. So Air Poly is just one of many um, that is out there that is using AI for imaging to actually tell visual impaired what they're seeing in front of them. So back to my PBM days, years ago, we were sending out genetics tests um, for warfarin. It's a great example. But I think we're going to see more and more as the genomics data is getting larger and larger data sets, these interactions um, will be more precise. And obviously, we've seen a lot of the announcements around precision medicine. So expecting to see more and more. Did you take your pill? Uh, so medication adherence, uh, you know, still a huge huge challenge for the marketplace. And I'm not here to discuss the AI cures model. I think it's very difficult to take, uh, to convince people to actually take their drugs, not to mention actually held the phone and, and in front of you and ingest it. Uh, but again, it's just a use case of how the imaging processing and real-time AI can actually help if you can convince people to take drugs and hold the phone in front of them. Uh, we've seen a slew of announcements with uh, IBM Watson and Life Sciences Company. Um, at Software, we just released a white paper around precision medicine and the um, uh, Cures, um, Century 21 Cures Act, which will sp supposedly, as passed House and into the Congress, will speed up the drug development. And of course, this is a tighter interaction now with the life sciences industry and digital health and health IT. So we're going to see a lot more around that in the coming years. So for those of you who know me, um, I actually have an NFC chip embedded in my hand. And part of that started as exploratory, what can we do for Alzheimer's patients and for the elderly? Yes, it's an ethical dilemma. Do you, you know, chip your parents and grandparents? Um, and then we came across a study um, that's actually trying to augment an Alzheimer's mind, right? So making decisions and helping decisions. This is truly, truly groundbreaking. Finally, again, I kind of pointed out, right, the wearable health. Um, so much data is being generated uh, today. And so I think the machine learning and the artificial intelligence analyzing all this data around the world at a population level, but also at a personalized level, uh, is absolutely key and uh, it's moving forward. This is the boring slide, and I'm not going to discuss it. There's a lot of ethical discussions um, around regulations. Um, we've seen, you know, clinical decision support. What's an app? How is it treated? Um, you know, if it's providing advice, and is a machine that's given an advice, how is that being regulated? We're going to post these slides so you can actually look at each one of these. Uh, but this is uh, Matthew Scherer's um, uh, vision and, and what the challenges are. I will finally leave you guys, uh, if you remember the question that I asked them, will it change healthcare? So the short answer is yes, and a matter of fact, it's changing it today. It's all around us, it's been around us. Um, and I'll leave you guys with a little story. My, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and some of those discussions within a COSLA that you guys have been having for a number of years around will technology replace the physician? Um, I do have to tell everyone, obviously, that hug from an oncologist, and until machines can actually feel human emotion, it will change the relationship, but certainly not will, will not replace. So hopefully you guys are not that hungry, but please go grab your lunch. Thank you very much. We have a booth out there, so happy to discuss each one of these in more details. And at 1.15, Jonathan Bush, who is also now a lifesaver, apparently. I don't know if anybody's seen that tweet. So he's coming at 115. Thank you very much. Thank you.